Hello guys, Dan Hook here and welcome to part eight of how to write a novel series. And in this video, we'll be discussing marketing, what I did and the different avenues you can take. So this topic has sort of been requested by a few people for me to talk about. So I'm just gonna talk about my process. I mean, I don't really know what I was doing with my marketing, but it seemed to work out quite well. Along with being very lucky with the people I have around me who helped just push that marketing quality up to the next level. So you've got your book nearing completion and now the next thing is to get your book cover done. Fiverr again is an absolutely amazing place. It's great value for money. You can go to them with a concept or just, you know, depending on who you choose, you can just say what you want and they'll mock up a design. And I got lucky with mine because my girlfriend is a illustrator and digital artist. So I gave her a few ideas that I had for my book, but ultimately didn't use my ideas because they were kind of a little bit rubbish. Thankfully, Sarah came up with an amazing idea, um, which is the, the, you know, the book cover that you can see here. Um, she came up with the colors, she came up with the design, she came up with all of it, the font. So yeah, I, I don't know, I like I just lucked out really. But if you haven't fallen on your feet like that, Fiverr is an awesome place to go. We've got the closest book to me is Chris Kenny's original Earth series. He had his book designed on Fiverr, I believe. Don't quote me on that. I will have a link down in the description below. I think Chris used the same person as Richard Holiday, who might have given him the contact, I don't really know, but I'll be sure to link to that in the description below as I just previously mentioned. But they both have really nice covers on their books and designed for a really good price. So once you've found someone on Fiverr, the next step is to then think of marketing materials. And the initial thought that most people have, or at least for me, is to get your characters drawn up because they are the protagonists, the antagonists, they're the people that drive the plot. And it's good to have something visual for your audience to look at. Again, Fiverr is gonna be the place to be or perhaps Instagram to find people that can draw your characters. And as you probably guessed, I lucked out again. <laughs> and my girlfriend drew my three main characters and even more for my book, which came out absolutely stunning as you can see. And I was able to use these designs for bookmarks and prints. And another important thing to notice is if you're thinking of merchandise, having your cover. So for example, these three characters here, having your cover that transfers easily to merchandise gives such a good opportunity for branding. So you know, I've got hoodies, I've got hats, I've got all sorts with that on. It, it provided an opportunity to capitalize and push forward the branding of the book. And the transferability of your cover is definitely something you should keep in mind if you want to have merchandise. Now, if you've got your art done, or perhaps it isn't quite your kappa, photographs are the next thing you could consider. If you've got a camera or a smartphone, a smartphone, most smartphones have excellent cameras. All you need to do is either pick a place that suits your character or perhaps scene and objects from your book. So for myself, I picked a handful of objects for each of my three main characters, went onto eBay, and over the few weeks of sort of surfing eBay, I picked up a load of secondhand cheap items that I could use for photo shoots. This is the mask for Shelby. My sister very, very kindly designed and made this mask. Um, it's got the little metal pipe here, which is missing, but that comes off and goes into like a filter box if you've read the story. Um, but yeah, this is made out of warbler and eva foam crafts and, you know, glue and bits of metal. And it's all sort of, it's very achievable. If you go online and you just look at sort of crafting bits and cosplay bits and pieces, if you're into making your own props and designs, this is definitely a direction you could go in, especially if you can't buy the objects that you're looking for. And of course, with a bit of photo editing, you know, I can make this look as shiny and as real as possible. Next is to find a place to take your photos. So I made sure with each of my three characters to have them be as different as possible while still fitting the characters. Because I wanted someone to see the photos and know that that was this character and have no confusion with it. So for Zara, I had rusted metal sheets and an old barrel. For Luther, I think it was on granite or slate. And for Shelby, it was out in a field. And they all visually look very different and make for a very nice sort of tile pattern, especially if you were like uploading to Instagram. Now on the Verge of Photos, you could obviously, you know, have you in it or do acting. And I, although I kind of like the idea of the acting, I feel like when you get people involved, it adds just that element of cheese. Like there's just a possibility that this is going to be a little bit more cheesy, you know, especially if you, I mean, not you personally, but like say for me, for example, if I was to do acting, I feel like I just wouldn't be able to do it as great as I think I could. And it would just be cringy. So I opted to just leave that out, focus on art, focus 
on photos, objects, and not have people in it as such. But it's definitely something that I would look at in the future. Maybe if you're, you know, gifted and can act uh, or know people that can act, you know, get them involved, get some live action things going on, especially for a trailer, that would be fantastic. But for me, in the main trailer, I had the character art that Sarah made, along with some landscapes that me and her made, combined with the synopsis or blurb, whatever you want to call it, that sort of went and sort of transitioned throughout the main trailer, alongside some audio clips, which was a mixture of ones I made myself, and also ones that I got, I think, from Audio Jungle, which is a, a online marketplace for audios. Some of them are free, some of them are paid for. I think it's now a paid for monthly subscription service. And they also have one called Video Hive, which offers uh, clips that you can use as well. And it's very, very handy, especially for short things like this, to just use a five second clip if you don't have it. And it's brilliant. And then in combination with this trailer, I had lucked out again, but my girlfriend's brother, Tim Moyo, he's a very talented musician and he kindly made me the Displaced soundtrack, which I will put up here. And also there'll be a link down below, but this is a lyric video that I made in After Effects to go along with it. What I wanted to create with this is obviously the music, it's out on Spotify, but for YouTube, I wanted there to be something visual for people to look at and to catch their attention. So be sure to check out his page. He's also on Fiverr and does music work, but essentially having the soundtrack really sealed the deal and made this feel like a complete package. So lastly are the character trailers, so it's sort of a similar vein as the main trailer, which is where I got the objects that I bought for the photo shoots. I took pictures of them again and I used them for teasers. Now these teasers, very simple. They took a, a lot, lot longer than you would think to make them. Um, and one, for example, is the axe um, from Shelby's storyline. I had his name, I had the title of the book, um, I had a bit of particles going through, and then I added a little blood drop effect and the sound of the blood dripping on the floor. Now, most people might not have even noticed that, but I just love making those finer details. You know, the, the sound of it dripping was just uh, just me moving my mouth and, and the blood drop, I had to uh, put fake blood on the ax and recorded it and then cut that drip out and put it on the better looking ax to make it. It was very complicated. I it probably was, was it worth it? I think so. <laughs> But, I, you know, it, I, I was just enjoying it. Um, and what I was going for with this was, again, creating a sense of mystery. You know, Luther had his gun there. Um, little barrel was smoking. Uh, it was a toy gun I bought. I think it was all gold, but I sprayed half of it black to match the description in the book. Well, actually, I think I changed the description in the book to match the fake gun that I bought. So it sort of lined up a little better for the character teaser trailers. But yeah, I basically just, you know, made sure everything lined up, picked certain scenes from the book. So the blood dripping with the axe, if you've read it, you know why there's blood dripping on it. You know, you know why there's a smoking uh, gun. I tried to add an element of depth, which really would only make sense if you saw them after you read the book. But who knows, maybe you've read the book and then you'll see them and you go, oh yeah, no, that ties up. <laughs> but all of this was done uh, in After Effects with tutorials, you know, I'm not a pro at After Effects. I literally, I just went on YouTube and I spent hours learning how to make these effects, learning how to make the lyric video, learning how to draw some of the landscapes for some of the main trailer pieces, learning how to animate bits. So the thing I really try to drive here is that you can make all this, but it has to take time. And if you rush your release, you're not gonna have time to make this marketing material, especially if you're doing it all yourself. But it's all out there, it's all on YouTube, and if you have any questions whatsoever, always feel free to ask me. Uh, what, and was this all too much for a small <laughs> self-published book? Oh, maybe, <laughs> I don't know, but I enjoyed it. And I have plenty of other ideas that I wanna do for the second book. So, I mean, there's no stopping me. You know, it might delay the flipping release by six months, but I'll be making those marketing. Um, and, you know, ultimately, I think it did help. Um, with my release, I did get over, I, I was into triple digits, which is always fun to say, with my pre-orders. You know, I got over 100 pre-orders, which I never even thought was possible. Like, the fact that I got over 100, I was like, you know, I was expecting like, I don't know, 30? Something like that. I don't know really, like not that much. Um, so I, I feel like it definitely helped. The marketing material definitely spoke for itself and hopefully, you know, went to sell the book. And it was just a little bit of patience, a little bit of learning, a little bit of luck, obviously, with who I know. Well, be sure to ask around or think about people you know and how they can help you 
with your book. Because at the end of the day, if if I didn't know a musician, I I, I don't know whether I would have thought about a soundtrack. I mean, it was it would have been a sick idea. I would love a soundtrack for it. But because I thought, oh, I know I know someone who can do that. Like, why don't I ask them? So I did, and they said, yeah. And so obviously, you know, that if you don't ask, you don't get. So if you know people with skills, don't be afraid to approach them, to ask them. You scratch their back, they'll scratch yours, return the favour. What goes around comes around and all that. But yeah, that's it. Once you have all these marketing materials or bits and pieces, you can then make your merchandise, you can make little banners for online, for adverts, and it just helps push things along that much further and makes you stand out as a brand and as someone to be taking more seriously. But yeah, that's it for this video. I'll be talking about Ingram Spark in the next video and self-publishing with the different routes you can take. But thanks for watching and I will see you soon.